Melinda, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, if you haven't already checked in, please check in. If you're on an iPhone and you have trouble, you may need to delete and re, re um, put, bring your app back, but need, delete it and bring it up. It's because of the new iOS. And if you don't have the app, you can go to the App Store, the Play Store, Play, Play Store for Google and um, find One Million Cups. Welcome. Uh, next week, uh, we meet every week. Um, every week we meet um, at the same time at 8.45 till 10 o'clock. And we have 160 chapters around the country that all meet at the same time. But obviously, if the time zones, they will be meeting at the same time. Um, we are a mastermind group, and um, we're not here to do any sharpshooting or anything like that, and it's a very safe and supportive area. Next slide, please. Uh, please go to our Facebook page and share Facebook Live with your friends. Um, the URL is IMC Fairfax, both for Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, our organizers are all here to help you guys, and uh, our mission is to lower the barrier across education and resources for um, new and um, other entrepreneurs that are really wanting to join us and come and enjoy our format. Uh, next slide, please. John, you, I saw you in the audience. Would you like to say a few words about Office Evolution? Sure, thank you, Melinda. Um, hello, everyone. Um, great to see everyone this morning. Uh, I'm John Yu, I'm with Office Evolution. Uh, we are a shared office space provider located uh, in Tyson's Corner. Uh, we provide fully furnished office space uh, as well as virtual office solutions uh, to small businesses, um, is looking for a mailbox or meeting room space uh, to conduct their business. I hope that this pandemic is over soon so we can uh, meet in person, so we can do all sorts of good things while we're meeting in face-to-face. -face. Um, we love supporting One Million Cups. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic organization uh, that supports small business. Uh, that are in the local community. So if you'd like to learn more about what we do and uh, check out our space, uh, feel free to drop me an a, a email. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, John Gaffigan, you're here. Can you talk about white cap cleaning, please? Sure, I could do a lot better once I'm unmuted. Um, well, I mean, a, a logical play to what John, you just said, is uh, the name white cap cleaning first off is a bit of a misnomer because it's not cleaning, it's deep disinfecting. Uh, it, it is a solution from a company out of Pittsburgh called Bactronics. Uh, white cap cleaning is the Northern Virginia franchise of this nine year old firm out of Pittsburgh. And our use cases is to provide a protective coating, uh, a very safe uh, EPA listed non-toxic solution that will give people better comfort of coming back into communal spaces. Like uh, John, you you and I will probably uh, chat with uh, Tony Barnett because Tony's helping assist with this. Um, we can apply this on a monthly basis and it would be a added level of security to stave off the effects of the uh, zombie apocalypse and let people get back to work again, which is what we need to do. And I'm happy to chat with anybody. I'm John at whitecapcleaning.com if you want to follow up with me, anybody. Thank you, John. So how are meetings work? Next slide, please. Um, what you will do is when the, we have the speaker come on, um, everybody will mute their, uh, their uh, sound. And when you get announced by our, um, by I'm jumping ahead, I guess, when, when we announce that you are going to um, speak, as I said, you mute it. And then once you speak, you will mute yourself again. So unmute and then mute. 
Uh, the speaker has five minutes to talk. Uh, and as I said, Jason will uh, call your name out before you are speaking and then you will unmute and then you will turn on your mic. And next slide, please. Uh, Garrett Rama, he's a Marine uh, corporate vet. Uh, he uh, has common sense coffee and it's a tech focused startup coffee roaster in Alexandria. Um, to uh, his niche is it's for top tier visionaries of the world who share in their accomplishments. And I want to welcome Garrett. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so, you know, again, I, I'm Garrett. So I, I started Common Sense Coffee uh, just uh, under a year ago. We, we actually launched on November 11th on Veterans Day last year. Uh, and, and since then, we've been uh, really trying to disrupt the coffee game. So, you know, the first thing I, I guess I want to ask everyone is, uh, how should we approach marketing sustainable solar powered coffee to extremely price sensitive coffee drinkers? Uh, what we're trying to do is make the coffee industry more sustainable, which we'll see that here in a second. And coffee is a commodity. So, you know, all the consumers, the majority of the consumers out there are extremely price sensitive uh, and, and small fluctuations in price will, will kind of lead them to another uh, brand or, or coffee company. Uh, so next slide. So what we're trying to do is really solve three problems. Uh, and the, the first one is sustainability. Uh, it, you know, if you, if you haven't heard, uh, in 2018, there was actually 110 million tons of carbon emitted from the coffee roasting process. Uh, and that turns into about 11 and a half pounds um, of carbon per one pound of coffee consumed. So there's a, there's a massive problem here. And you know, some of the biggest reasons for that carbon being emitted is inefficient supply chains. So having to uh, ship or transport coffee from a farm to a roasting facility and then a roasting facility to a cafe and then to a cafe to uh, consumers everywhere. Uh, and then also in the roasting process, uh, which is where the majority of the uh, carbon emissions come from. And the industry relies heavily on natural gas and propane, which uh, as we know, um, isn't all that great for uh, the environment. And then the, the second problem we wanna work on is technology. So for some reason, uh, the coffee industry still relies on the same coffee roaster design that was uh, created in the late 1800s. There hasn't been many improvements in the entire industry since uh, coffee like was first introduced to society many, many, many years ago. Uh, so, you know, we're in an age where technology can fundamentally disrupt industries and that's uh, something that we're working on doing and, and I'll share more about that here in a second. And the third problem uh, is providing community. So many times coffee companies talk a lot about the coffee that they're creating. It's so amazing, it comes from here. Uh, but no one talks about the people who drink the coffee, the, 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 the community aspect. Many times people go and they build companies at coffee shops. They go and connect with friends and family and, and uh, meet people at coffee shops and, and share uh, intimate moments over, over a cup of coffee. And that's one thing that we really want to highlight. So next slide. And, and so how we're, how we're planning to solve these issues uh, are by leveraging renewable electric roasting technology that didn't exist uh, just five years ago. Uh, and, and the purpose of that is, as I mentioned before, to, to really cut the emissions in half um, that currently exist today. And we plan on doing that by either retrofitting cafes uh, with solar systems or by just sourcing solar from the grid. Uh, solar is actually on a trajectory to be cheaper uh, on, on a per kilowatt basis than natural gas and propane over the next five, 10 years. Uh, and we plan to really spend a significant amount of investment to, to uh, um, reduce the carbon footprint here. And then uh, we, we, we also plan uh, from a technology perspective to eliminate the need for a roasting facility and really bring the coffee roasting process closer to the end consumer. So they have 
more uh, fresher coffee and they can actually see what's being done before they actually get that cup of coffee. So in addition to in-house roasting, uh, we also have a website where we uh, fulfill online orders and each one of our cafes will actually be equipped to do online fulfillment capabilities. And then we'll, we'll adopt different uh, delivery services such as local pickup, uh, we're, we're exploring drone delivery, uh, areas where technology can really enhance the value uh, of the coffee drinking experience. And then the community aspect, uh, this is where, you know, we believe just as One Million Cups does, uh, everyone has a story to tell, everyone uh, needs community, needs support in some way, and, and that's one thing that we do. So we, as of right now, we uh, have a blog where we profile entrepreneurs, change makers, and visionaries across the country. Uh, we, we have intention on launching a podcast and other video mediums to, to really share and connect people. Uh, next slide. So this is what we've done to date. So as I mentioned before, just uh, under a year, we have launched a business. Uh, we've put out several roasts and we've started partnering with multiple businesses uh, to expand our distribution footprint. And just recently, uh, we, we've actually been accepted into the National Science Foundation i program to help refine the solar technology. Uh, and we are also an Insight partner uh, where we work with Georgetown University uh, with some of their MBA and JD students to help solve this problem as well. And we're actually working on uh, our, our first coffee shop. Um, so uh, with, with COVID uh, kind of coming, we, we actually had to vacate our space here in DC and, and the rent prices were uh, still extremely expensive. Uh, so just about two hours, um, you know, northwest of DC and, and just in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, uh, we're actually constructing our first uh, cafe there right now. Uh, that will be up and running here in about a month and a half. So we're really excited for that. And um, we're excited to be able to provide coffee in, in a more brick and mortar format. So next slide here. Uh, so really, who are our customers? So I, ideally, uh, our, the perfect customer is, is a coffee lover that appreciates sustainability and wants to build something for the world. And we're, we're pretty ambiguous with building something for the world on purpose because people have their own unique ways of, of bringing value to the world and own unique ways of making society better. And we, we feel that sustainability in the coffee industry uh, is becoming an increasing issue. And with two thirds of just Americans alone drinking coffee daily, the, the, um, the need to have a more sustainable industry is, has never been more significant. So next slide. So when you, when you take us compared to some of the competition out there, like Starbucks, Blue Bottle Coffee, which you may have heard of, uh, and then just your, your overall local cafes that you experience and, and go to all the time. Uh, some of the things that we're working to differentiate ourselves is having in-house roasting, which uh, other than Starbucks, most of the coffee uh, cafes out there and coffee companies out there don't actually have. Starbucks is actually growing their Starbucks reserve roastery footprint. They have six reserve roasteries across the globe now, and they're looking to uh, beef that number up to 30 uh, over the next five years. And that's including uh, what happened with COVID. So even though they're, they're reducing their real estate footprint, they're still investing in uh, creating a roasting experience for customers. And then uh, we could give fresher coffee. Oh, go, go back one, one slide really quick. <laughs> Uh, and, and then from the fresher coffee perspective, with us doing the, the roasting in-house where the consumer can see it, we, we give the customer fresher coffee. And that's something that everyone uh, can see the benefit in. And uh, by having the roaster in the facility, it eliminates the need for a roasting facility elsewhere where no one sees it. And it eliminates all the transportation costs uh, from really the roasting facility to the cafe. And on the next slide, you know, I just want to reiterate uh, what we're trying to do is, is really um, push the coffee industry forward. So our ask is, hey, how should we, how should we talk to consumers, uh, price sensitive consumers about how they drink coffee uh, and start that education process as well as um, kind of get them on board uh, to help change the industry for the better. Thank you.
Great job, uh, Garrett. And we appreciate you come, uh, coming to One Million Cups using our platform to uh, help tell your story and then also give feedback on your, uh, on your business. Absolutely, thank you. So I'm gonna turn it over to our, uh, our moderator, which is Justin. Make sure if you have any in the chat, uh, or you can also raise your hand here um, as well. Uh, Melinda, you, you have a question? I do. Um, first question that I have, I really like the idea that you're solar roasted, and I really haven't noticed any other coffee company with that benefit. And when you said that that makes us a fresher cup, are there other competitors that do the solar roasting? And is there a way that maybe you can start doing a tasting test, kind of like you know, Pepsi and Coke or something in some of the um, advertising you do, even if it's just internet advertising on your website and things where you have a blind test and you can taste the freshness of your coffee and the powerfulness of it. It reminds me of Folgers from years ago. And that's an old fashioned brand from General Foods who got gobbled up. But um, they used to do taste tests. And I really like, as I said, uh, if there are other benefits from solar, the amount of money you save, what's going on with nature and things that you can give out that might be a little bit geeky. I think people are really into saving the environment as well. No, that's, a, that's a really good point. And and there's actually a few uh, like independent coffee shops that are actually opening up. There's there's actually one in, that has been wildly successful uh, in Colorado that that leverages solar technology, uh, but they do it in a different way where they essentially have a solar array and then like a small little roaster um, like right in the center of the solar array and it and it takes um, you know a few hours to to actually roast the coffee, but. The technology is now getting onto the market to where you could do commercial scale coffee roasting. Uh, and that's, that, that's a great idea, like being able to bring in customers and, uh, you know, get them to, to do blind taste tests and just do, do the education process and let them know, hey, this is, this is how you're contributing to solve the problem. And saving money for the, at the same time to the environment and using up all the energy in the environment. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Jen, looks like you have a question next. Could you talk a little bit more, Garrett, about the visionaries piece and the naming of your coffee? I mean, I see you have Lincoln, Washington, Jefferson. Are you also including, I mean, who are you thinking of including from a visionary standpoint? Are you including women and not just presidents that are men? Just wondering, yeah, talk yeah. a little bit more about the purpose and the why, because I think that visionary piece is huge, but how do we expand that? to really expand the relevance to your audience too. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the naming actually comes from uh, the piece of lit literature called Common Sense. Uh, it was written during the same time as the founding of the country. And we wanted to tie it into really like the DC area and, and pretty much like all the history that in that sense. Uh, but we also wanted to connect it to people. And we ran into an issue where you can't name it after someone um, like in modern times, because the copyright uh, law and everything. Uh, so we were like, hey, what if we, what if we kind of push it way back in time uh, and really kind of highlight how things were way different back then uh, and then really start to add more folks into it and really connect folks from, from a historical sense all the way up until modern time. So um, absolutely, we wanna include everyone um, in, in this and we wanna be really inclusive um, and, and I guess the strategy that we have taken so far and definitely open to suggestions is, is starting really like, I guess at the birth of the nation. And then uh, we, we tell that story a little bit and then we really try to reach out to folks modern day who are, are really um, just doing things different. So uh, some of the folks that we have actually um, profiled so far, uh, I, I wanna say 75% of them have been women so far. So, so we're definitely, um, trying to, to, to bridge that gap, you know, like really quickly uh, and really make it an inclusive community. Great, thank you. Yeah. All right, 
next, it looks like Talmar has her hand up in the participation. Uh, Talmar? Thanks, Justin. Good morning, Garrett. Thanks so much for a great presentation. I'm Talmar. Um, uh, my, my questions are, this appears to be a marketing question, and maybe we just didn't get enough of the backstory. I love the tie-in to the founding farm, uh, founding farmers, well, I must be hungry, it's a restaurant, um, uh, to the founding fathers, and um, I like the idea of tying it to entrepreneurs or innovation and visionaries, um, so I do think that there's a thread there. Do you guys have a tagline? Uh, yeah, so what we say is uh, roasted for visionaries. Roasted um, for visionaries. Okay, sorry, I missed that. I apologize. Um, so so I like that concept. I think that there is a, a thing that you can go there. The question is, um, is visionaries something that people will identify with? Um, so I think that if you're going to use that as a marketing approach, you have to also educate them that all of us have visionary possibilities in us or else I might not think that I qualify. Um, so, and I don't and I, it, I don't think that that's where you're trying to go, but visionaries is a big word, right? And so if you really wanna build a community around that, you, not just highlighting individuals, I think you wanna find a way to let everybody know that you have the possibility at the very least, if not you're, if you're not already a visionary, you're just not, maybe not seeing it in yourself, but you are already inclusive of this group. Yep. Um, and so, I, I love the concept, I love where you're going, but I think if you're gonna build it around community, my recommendation is to really find a way to tie in how the average coffee drinker could embrace the visionary in themselves to feel like they can be a part of this community. Yeah, that, that's actually a really great point and, and one that we've uh, ran into to, to walls uh, all, all the time with, you know, folks come to us and they're, they're like, oh, well, I'm not really like changing the world. And it's like, well, tell us your story. And then, you know, halfway through the story they're like doing all these great things and we're like well that's that's incredible like like tell us about it uh and so what we're trying to do now um like we really like the visionaries concept and, and if we need to change it like afterwards that's why we included like entrepreneurs or visionaries entrepreneurs and change makers to kind of make it a little bit more broader um but you know one thing that we've been doing is really highlighting certain people uh that are that come from just average backgrounds and really trying to put them in the limelight so other people can say, oh, wow, that person's just a regular person and, and they're doing all these cool things. Maybe I could do that too. Um, but we're also like updating our copy, like on our website to say, hey, you know, everyone's really unique in their own ways. And you never and that's know. What we're yeah. yeah. I do think, I think there's something there that you could do it. I, I actually wouldn't recommend getting away from the word visionary as long as you can align it for the marketplace. Um, and maybe what it is, is maybe it ends up being some kind of a marketing outreach where you have others recognize the visionary traits of someone they know. So that we're reminded, look, we might not see it in ourselves, but other people, we're inspiring other people all the time. I really like the positive ideology behind visionaries and how they inspire and how, you know, there's greatness in all of us. I think there's a lot there. Um, I just would love to see a way for people to recognize them a little faster and easier as a possible for the community. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. Thank you for your time. Thanks. All right, it looks like Rosemary has a question. After that, Mr. David Horn. All right, Rosemary. Hey, good morning, Garrett. Uh, great presentation. I'm a huge fan right. of the Java. Um, so the question I wrote down in the chat was, could, could you, so I have a marketing background, operation background. There's this notion of a persona. It is sort of an archetype of the person you're speaking to. And the more fully you can develop that persona as an actual person, the better you can actually speak to that person. Um, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of disciplines about, you know, give them a backstory, actually take a, a picture and composite the picture so that you're actually speaking to a person. Um, I, I think what I've heard you discuss kind of gets around the archetype, but not really who it is that you're speaking to. And I love the idea of visionary. Um, I just wonder if your challenge question, and I think what you're trying to do is build a brand, build your sales, build your uh, presentation out in the market, right? Yeah, um, right. So your question is, how do you approach marketing 
your unique approach to coffee to value coffee purchasers. And now you've got this third element of visionary. So the question is, can you describe that person who resonates with the visionary, understands sustainability is a good point, buys by value? Like if you can describe that person, then you can begin to tease apart the exact message that gets to them. And, and, and I will just recommend this for you and not something to answer right now. Give it a think. And, and I think when you go through i you'll really go deep on this one. Um, what do you say to that person and are there enough of them to do what you need to do in the market? And maybe you need to um, disassociate one of those three pieces, visionary, price sensitive, ecologically minded, and focus on just one of them. Build your beachhead and then expand to the rest or at least not close down the other two, mm -hmm. right? Um, just think about that because, you know, I, I have a startup. I've been in a number of companies. Your message is great. It's very large and inclusive, but it's difficult to focus your um, specific message on that many different kinds of, of value points. I'll just say value points from a marketing perspective. So anyway, great job, great idea. Um, can't wait to taste your coffee. <laughs> No, that, that's actually, uh, you know, a, a, another great, great piece uh, and something that we kind of go back and forth with all, all the time. It's like, hey, do we double down on, on one thing uh, and get rid of the other thing? Uh, and we, we actually, we came up with five personas and, and, and e each one, uh, we have like one that's inclusive of all three, then, you know, one that's just the one, one that's the other one, and then kind of throughout the list. So that's something that we've uh, been exploring. Great, great. All right, so just want to reiterate, um, just to make sure that we're keeping the questions and answers short, just so we can get everyone's ideas and make sure everyone is uh, getting through it. But next we have uh, Mr. David Horn, then John Gaffigan, and then Tony Barnett. So, Mr. Horn. Hey, thanks a lot, Garrett. Great presentation. I'm a coffee lover if there is such a thing and uh, look forward to trying your product. Um, I'm gonna be a bit of a contrarian here just because you're early in the start of what looks like a very promising opportunity. Um, I honestly think you're going about this um, with the right idea, but the way it's coming across is rather esoteric and indirect and um, it's understood, but it takes inference it takes interpretation, it takes explanation. And really, I think you could be a lot clearer and more direct, especially given the need, you need to stand out in a commodity market. And so I, I think your name and your visionary inference and things like that are just a bit removed for now in trying to get noticed and stand out for what you mean simply and clearly. So frankly, I think you ought to rethink the brand name I think you ought to rethink the brand slogan. And I think you'll be able to position yourself clear just off the bat with a few of those things up front. For example, you know, we believe great tasting coffee can be done with less damage to the environment. Um, I mean, just be clear about what you believe it is you stand for, represent, and offer. And I think you'll be um, understood right away. I think you'll have the sustainability enthusiasts and supporters gravitate to learn more right away. And I think you just open yourself more in a modern context without all, I hate to say it, the, the cutesy work it takes to understand what you're trying to bring forward and offer. No, that's good. Thank, thank you for that. Um, you know, that's something also that we, we've been exploring as well. Uh, and you know, definitely open to like, I guess, more suggestion, like specific suggestions on that. Like, like we, I guess we know that um, it could be a possibility. Um, it, we're just trying to figure out, hey, hey, what would that actually look like, um, you know, in the, in the future. So that's good. 
Great. All right, Mr. Gaffigan next, and then I Tony follow, Burnett. I followed Jen's rule. I unmuted, so I'm not wasting time. I'll be a slight contrarian to Dave's contrarian here uh, from a standpoint of, I love the name Common Sense Coffee, so I, I wouldn't change that. I think you can change the underlying uh, context around it, but I'm going to go back to what Rosemary said a few minutes earlier. And both Rosemary and Dave were kind of touching on points that, that I was thinking about. Uh, and it's really kind of putting borders around your the personas that you feel are your target audience. And, and I think both of them were talking about that in, in, in kind of the abstract. And I'm saying in the general, you know, you're going to have the high-end premium grade coffee drinker. And I don't know if that's 10 or 20% of all coffee drinkers, but how deep do you want to get down into like the guy who says, I want a cup of Joe and you can get perfectly good coffee beans at Costco for like 10 bucks for a two or three pound bag. And, you know, that'll last you a month. So, you know, when you talk about your challenge question is bringing sustainability to extremely price sensitive coffee drinkers, I think we all agree that coffee at a certain level is a commodity. And I did pose on your website a question around mold, which is kind of a part B of what I'm saying, because there are online retailers that are saying mold is prevalent in 90% of the coffees. I don't know if that's just marketing hype, false news, or if that's a legitimate issue. But as you come up with defining things, saying you're sustainable is good, but how many people buy compostable cutlery that cost 10 times what standard disposable plastic cutlery cost. So it's a pocketbook issue as well. That's a lot to absorb, but I, I just want you to figure out how deep down into the cup of Joe people you want to live um, it's so that you're not losing that high end people. And I think that's going to help you further define. Yeah, no, that, that's really good. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tony Barnett. Sorry about that, just had to click on mute. All right, I'm gonna go back to kind of something Melinda said. And this is, and, I, and I'm saying this from experience. You can have a cool store. You can have a great brick and mortar. You have a wonderful concept for your coffee company. But if the coffee is not good, no one's going to buy it. Or they might buy it one time and they'll never come back again. And fundamentally, I think what you need to do is be focusing on having the best tasting coffee possible and starting to build a momentum or demand or or, you, or regular buyers who will speak out on your behalf on that part. Because <clears throat> when you think about it, why is Starbucks popular? Why is everybody sit there and go to Starbucks and not uh, Caribou Coffee or to Pete's Coffee or to any of the other coffee shops around? Because they their taste is unique to them and people like it. They 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 hook into that. Um, there are some wonderful independent coffee companies around here that do great. But why do they do great? It's not because of location. In fact, most of them are in really crappy locations. And there's not because there's anything great about their store. Their stores are really kind of fundamentally goofball -y. But why is it? Because their coffee tastes great. And once you get that market of that one group of people that's locked into your coffee and will you know, take the extra 30 minutes out of their way in a day to go get a cup of coffee from you. That's what you need to focus on. And in marketing, getting people to sit there and try it, you know, word of mouth, even maybe sit there and get a restaurant or two in the area that's starting to use your coffee. That's a fundamental thing because like with wine and with everything else, if it doesn't taste good, people won't go for it. You may have the greatest concept in the face of the earth. People love it. But if the coffee doesn't taste good and, and it's not compelling for people to keep rebuying it and becoming hooked to that flavor, that's the big difference. And you have to have that unique flavor. As John said, you can get good coffee just about anywhere at this point because of quality control. But if you have something unique that's that taste differentiator, that's going to be what's going to be get people compelling. Then all the rest of it falls into place after. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's um, that's one thing we, we have explored many times as well. Uh, like we, we used to run a lot of ads, like social media ads and everything. And we realized that conveying the taste of a coffee 
uh, over a digital medium is not great whatsoever. It's really difficult to do that. Uh, so what we did was we significantly reduced our marketing budget and just started handing out coffee. So we have like what I would say one of the best um, affiliate programs and like milestone reward programs uh, out there. Uh, people can win up to a year's worth of coffee. Um, there's a referral program where, or an affiliate program where people uh, by word of mouth um, can, can recommend us uh, to other folks and they get basically a 10% commission as well as giving a 10% discount to people, uh, which is huge. Uh, so we're, I mean, these things are helping, but you know, I, I think like you said, um, getting someone with a cup is, is the best thing to do. And that's just a, a, a I mean, extremely laborious process, but it's, it's one that's really important. All right, next up we have Ms. Jen uh, and then Melinda and Mr. Devin Smith. Jen. Um, just a few thoughts. I don't think I found a gift card option on your site. So I'd love to be able to send people gift cards to purchase coffee, test it or try it. Um, it I would also recommend moving your testimonials up to the top. They're a bit buried. And so you have a lot of great testimonials about the flavor or taste, but I have to scroll to find them. Um, so just a thought there. And then from a visionary standpoint, maybe find a mastermind group or a group like Cadre where they have discerning members and you know you have visionaries who are members and now they have coffee, right? Um, that would be great. My last question, because I, I do love coffee, but I'm not a coffee snob, or at least I'm not educated on coffee. I don't know from a price standpoint from, or from an ounce standpoint, how much do you need to use to make a good cup of coffee? What's the price really coming down to and what's the difference? Um, because the bags you have seem like they may not be huge. And so like someone like me where I'm like, oh, lots of coffee for a great coffee, I might go through it pretty quickly and then be kind of irritated. So you've got on your website a coffee pot and different things to make coffee great. Do I need to know all of that to get the best out of your coffee or can I just buy a bag? Those are, those are great points. Um, on the, on the gift card route. So will you, I, 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 so we have gift cards, but they're, they're under the merchandise, um, kind of like category at you as a user, would you prefer or expect them to be kind of everywhere on the, like the, like even under the coffee category? Oh, I was looking for them under the coffee. Okay. I mean, so instead I bought some bags of coffee, so that's fine. But I, I would put them where people might see them. Who okay. cares if it's in four pages or five pages, you know, just that it's not annoying, but it should be logically different places where people might buy. Awesome. Yeah. We, we go back and forth with that all the time. It's like, should we put them all on there? Should we try and organize it? It's just doing the customer experience stuff on the website is, is fun, but it's like, you get really into the, into the weeds, but thank you. All right, Melinda, you had a question as well, and then Devin Smith. One of the ideas that everybody and what we've been talking about, I thought of is you should have a contest. And it could be a national contest on a local basis where you nominate people that are visionaries and keep it in the green category of environmentally, environment and things that they're doing for the community that is green and then publish a top 100 list around the country or something, because that would really get your name out there. If you had a campaign to um, nominate people in your community that are green and are doing green things and uh, associate yourself with the green movement, which you really are. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, Earth Day Earth was 50 years this year. There are a lot of ways that you can tie into the environment. And that along with uh, the taste and the, the solar power, you know, how you manufacture it being solar, it really goes together for like a very nice campaign. And you will then get to be known as maybe king of um, the uh, green movement in a lot of the communities. 
And a contest usually is the kind of thing that can work. You can have a couple of months, it can run over two or three months, but with uh, promotions, you could do some little tags on your, your packages when people buy the coffee to nominate somebody. I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can get the word out without spending a lot of money on advertising. You can have it on your website. If any retailers are taking your product, you can put it on shelf talkers in the store. Uh, even have the retailers nominate other green organizations. That's a that's a really great idea. Uh, are you thinking like something along the lines of like the Fortune or Forbes list, where yes. like they do like thirty <laughs> under thirty or yeah, uh, exactly. And okay. nobody's doing it in the green environment area right now. Okay, yeah, that's something we we've actually. So we're working on a piece now. Uh, we're, we're actually in a um, like a entrepreneurship incubator called Veterans in Residence with uh, WeWork and. Mm. Um, we basically reached out to the rest of the people in the cohort and we're getting ready to publish a, an article on roughly 20 folks. Um, so it's like, normally we do pieces on, on one person, but this one is a, a piece on 20 people really highlighting uh, general themes in their coffee habits, uh, what their favorite things are. And then we kind of use a little bit of like statistics to show, you know, general trends across groups. Um, but that's that's really interesting. I, I really like that idea. Yeah, great idea. Um, so next we have Mr. Uh, Devin Smith. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, Gary, thank you for presenting a really good presentation. Um, I just had a, a question. Um, so I used to work out in um, Red, Redwood City, uh, Bay Area, uh, tech people, a lot of startups, a lot of um, visionaries, as you say. Um, and then you have these coffee shops, kind of like with some ideas of what you have. I mean, I really like their name, uh, Common Sense Coffee. It's a good name. Um, but my question is, do you feel like um, this would, this uh, uh, Common Sense Coffee would have to be uh, centrally located in those specific types of areas, like Silicon Valley, uh, like uh, maybe like Austin and those big tech areas for, for you to reach your customers? Uh, and so, you know, how, how would you plan to you know, do that? I guess we just had a question along those lines, like, because it seems like the customer has to be around uh, tech areas, tech centers, um, and people who would be um, more um, accessible or more interested in uh, sustainable and renewable energy and stuff like that. Yeah, great, great, great question. So uh, what, what we found is um, the I, I would say the general population um, in America isn't really quite there on a sustainability front yet. There's still like different communities that are really divided about how to think about it. Um, and, and generally what we found is in the bigger cities like DC, New York, San Francisco, you know, all those bigger metropolitan areas, there's a lot higher concentration of people who care about the environment. And they really like go to those environments to say like, hey, you know, this is a problem. Um, but like in, in some of the suburbs, like at least where I'm from, uh, it doesn't seem like people care too much. And, and uh, you know, there's like a bigger education process there. I think eventually we'll get there. But, you know, absolutely. We'll probably start out in, in bigger cities just to, you know, really reach that target market. But eventually we'd like to be um, really like, you know, all, all, all across the country in different different capacities. Thank you. Yep. Great. Next, we have uh, Mr. Didan Rodriguez and then Mr. David Horn. Didan. Hey, what's going on? Um, so uh, my question was uh, that your website mentions single malt whiskey and single vineyard wine as being better and tasting better. You, it's something you hit uh, on the head there. Uh, how are the successful single malt whiskey and single vineyard wine folks, how are they marketing their products? Um, and I don't know, I don't know the, your market research, but I would really look at what are the successful guys doing in their spaces that you can replicate for coffee. And I'm going to agree with David Horn. Uh, you've got visionary sustainability and luxury all kind of muddled together. I would, I would recommend looking at making the product packaging look a little more high end to match that price point. Um, it, it, it is it is it is significantly um, more pricey to go and get this luxury coffee than it is for me to just go get uh, a 12 ounce 
bag of Duncan of Duncan or uh, great value. I think that you really have to look at this from the perspective of who do I want purchasing this coffee? Uh, visionaries, all that stuff is great, but what it boils down to, what it really boils down to is I want people who can afford a luxury coffee to get luxury coffee and it has to be an experience. And I hate, I, I hate to disagree with the gentleman who was talking about pri uh, taste. Um, I've tasted some crappy coffees, some horrible, expensive coffees, and they're still in business and their coffee sucks. But I like a certain type of coffee, like cheaper coffee. And I want, like to Jen's point, I want to be able to make, I want that 12 ounce bag to last me a while. I want, like, I'm, I'm, a, cons I'm a consummate, choppy drinker, three or four cups in a day. Um, maybe kind of marketed like, I, I don't know, you know, for special occasions or however you, you think, but um, that's it. That, that's my input. No, re really, really great points there. Appreciate it. Next, we have David Horn, then Tony Barnett. Hey, Gary. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it may go without having to be said, but the coffee has to be good. And with the other person it is good to whatever taste uh, person is aligned with in terms of what they like coffee to taste like. Uh, we happen to buy coffee online from a coffee shop in New Jersey. Uh, they roast it on premises. It's absolutely fantastic. It's richer and more complex and deeper in body and flavor than Starbucks. But that's because we like basically European style, heavy duty, hit me in the face coffee. Other people probably don't like it that much. My point is when I go to your website and I see the statement start, we are, and then I read what's there and I think of what your target market is, your target markets, my daughter, she's in her twenties. She's all about trying things that are not old value necessarily established pattern based, but contemporary forward thinking, progressive oriented toward the environment, using technology to its best available benefits we can all enjoy. And when I read your we are statement, I'm sorry, but it's, it's missing at least two thirds of your presentation. And I think honestly, if this we are statement were clearer like your presentation was, my daughter would drive from the suburbs of Washington DC where we live into the city to try your coffee. And so I think you're onto something really good. You're just kind of keeping it masked from the people who will wanna see it, read it, try it. And again, if it's good copy, buy it. Yeah, great point there. Mr. Barnett with the last question. Okay, so uh, David, thank you. You actually tapped onto something that I was going to bring up and wanted to say before this closed. College campuses, all right? The students are always open to drinking and trying new things. You have a philosophy here that's attractive to them. And if you start going around and doing taste, taste, taste testings or getting college students to buy in and opt into your philosophy, but also your coffee, they can also be your evangel you know, your evangelist for spreading the word about it. What will they do? They'll drive out of their way. They'll make it a point to order online because they're younger into this. They're more sensitive to this than to others. And to your point about, or an earlier point about uh, being, you know, and you know, a visionary. What other group wants to be visionary than a college student that's you know that's sitting there looking at their future and they're thinking about the fact that all the Greek big leaders started their you know their endeavors when they were in college, so it's a good marketing tactic to shift. But to David Horn's point, yeah, you need to expand on the website a little bit to attract them, but also target that market and focus on that market because they haven't had their taste buds or I should say their taste profiles developed enough yet because that's part of what Starbucks does. And I was doing a little research when we were talking, Starbucks is making a huge effort to sit there and get the college students hooked on their coffee because of the fact that they know that's their future customer base. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really great point and, and something that we're, we're working on. And we, we see that, 
at least the university concept is, is kind of how we envision the, like, I guess our business um, in the sense that um, like bringing the historic sense and then also into the new, um, like for example, I'm, I'm a UVA grad, uh, an American grad, uh, and, and now I actually go to GW as well. And it's like each one of those institutions have like long, rich history, uh, but every single year they're, you know, having people go through their organization that eventually go on to to really impact the world, and, and that's something that we're trying to like you know, bridge that gap between it all and, and really, so, so touching on the universities or is a great thing. Great. I want to send it over to Donnell uh, just for the very, very last question. Donnell. I want to just say uh, first and foremost, outstanding presentation. Um, I love your concept and everything that you talked about. Um, it's hard to believe that you are a Marine with all of this great, with these great ideas, you know, with me being Army. But um, my final question to you is, what can our One Million Cups community do for you? Ah, uh, great. So, uh, you know, again, thank, thank you for having me here today. You know, I, I, I think being able to do this and, and give feedback is, is super important, uh, not only for the longevity of, of any enterprise, but for personal professional development. Uh, across the board. Um, and, and, you know, if I had one additional ask, I guess, beyond what all the value everyone has already given me, um, there is a survey uh, that I think Renetta sent out at the beginning. Um, it, it, if you feel enticed to, to kind of stay connected with us, uh, just ask you a few questions. Um, one, you know, if, if, if you're building something and, and you want to be featured, um, and, and want basically free publicity for your business, I mean, reach out. We have an application process for that. Uh, we're also looking to uh, build an advisory board. So have uh, folks that, that can help us get to the next level and be a part of the strategic decision-making. Uh, it is an equity-based uh, advisory board, so you would get compensated with equity. Uh, there's another application process, more information. I'd be happy to chat. Uh, and then just, you know, anything that that you didn't want to say in like a public forum. Uh, if you want more candid feedback, uh, you could put it in the, in the thing um, or on the survey. Definitely appreciate the candid feedback. You know, I, I think uh, that's the, the beauty about starting businesses and, and trying to disrupt industries. You have to get to the hard problems and really get to the pain points uh, and solve those pain points. And if you do, that's, that's when success comes. So, so thank you again. And uh, you know, again, try to fill out the survey uh, to stay connected with us. And, and uh, thank you all for having me. Great job. Let's give them a round of applause or a hand <laughs> or a smoke signal or something. The thing that comes to mind whenever I, um, when you're talking is, hmm, that's a great idea. That's a great slogan right there. You can use it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Royalties. <laughs> mm, that's a great idea. Uh, so I'm going to pass this over to Jen. Actually, to me, I think. Go ahead, Melinda. Okay. Um, next slide we've got. Uh, next week we have Quick Hire on October 7th. And then next slide, the upcoming presenters after Quick Hire are Crown Fox Adventure, a, a wildlife ride, a, a wildlife ride rope ride called and Plurius Inc. Next slide, please. Or let's see the good slide. Uh, upcoming events on October 1st, we have Map Out, a quick three-step online um, generation press. And on October 3rd, there's a fight to, to suicide from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Tuesday, October 6th, uh, there's inter uh, actually, it's uh, starting a business in Fairfax County entrepreneurship. Russ, do you have anything else? I stole them from your list. No, that was actually it. Uh, the Fairfax EDA is hosting the Entrepreneurship 101. Normally, it's at 730. They have a special thing that day, so they're doing it at 11 on Tuesday. And uh, the Walk for Suicide is um, uh, just to help promote the suicide awareness in this area. It's gotten really bad with the COVID.